Okay, we're back. Now we're in the section of unit seven of personality. And so since personality is one of those things so complicated and there is no one size fits all when determining how to explain people's personalities, this is why we will have different perspectives from the different approaches in psychology. And the first one we're going to go into is the psychodynamic slash psychoanalytic perspective on personality so you put that at the top there all right so personality okay so personality is a person's and write this down first bullet i'm going to go as quickly as possible so you're going to have to pause and then write down each little thing i'll try to put that this is the next bullet so you know that you should be writing it down or um rewinding the video okay anyway the little side note there okay so personality ready so first little bullet, personality is a person's unique and relatively stable patterns of behavior, characteristics, thoughts, and emotions. Okay, so make sure to write that down. And since this is so complicated and complex, this is why we have so many different theories on emotion, depending on the approach. Okay, and even within those approaches of the different psychoanalytic, cognitive, behavioral, um, humanistic, there's also then theories within those theory, those perspectives. All right, so psychodynamic perspective, it's the first one. So write this down, and it's not in here, but this should be your next subtopic. It should not be Sigmund Freud. Please write it in. You're going to write psychodynamic perspective, and this is just how they, they explain personalities. And they say that it's the unconscious, first bullet, is the unconscious forces determine and influence a personality, okay? And we are separated, next bullet, into three levels. Our mind is separated into three levels. And they are, first level is your consciousness. And this is your sense of reality. And they say it is the smallest part of what goes on in your mind. And then... Next little bullet, it's what really drives us. What really drives us is really under the surface, okay? It's not in the conscious mind. The next one is going to be the pre-conscious level, and this is where we can bring our thoughts from consciousness to, I'm sorry, we could bring this, the pre-consciousness, to our conscious awareness. And then the last one is your unconscious, and this is that you have no awareness of this, and they believe this is the one that um, the most action takes place from. Okay, this is what really drives us to do what we do. Um, <clears throat> under the psychodynamic, they believe that personality is unconscious and that behavior is only a surface ca characteristics. Okay, it's just the surface level. Um, now, we next bullet is that they explore the symbolic meanings of those behaviors and then the deep inner workings of the mind. Okay, so they look at the behavior and then like the symbolism behind all of these things. This is where a lot of times when if you have dreams and you search it up, like what does this dream mean, you'll get um, like if you, you know, have a dream with a snake they tend to use symbolism, right? And they say, they'll attach it to your unconsciousness and what it what it means, okay? And it just kind of comes from this area of psychology, of the psychodynamic, psychoanalytic, which is the unconscious, okay? Now, now we could start with this one, which is Sigmund Freud's theory. And he is the core founder of psychodynamic or psychoanalytic really was the first one. Psychodynamic kind comes after. So Sigmund Freud, this dude, little, little interesting man he was, <laughs> but he definitely um, showed the importance of the unconsciousness as well as childhood, right? Childhood trauma or childhood experiences really are going to um, kind of create us or influence us as adults, all right? So Sigmund Freud, um, there's a lot of controversy with him. But he is going to be the one that kind of studies um, the unconscious mind and childhood. 
Now he started this thing called the free association. Free association is linked straight to psychoanalytic, which basically means that it is a method of exploring the unconscious mind. And the way to do that, so make sure you wrote that down, is a method of, um, of just exploring the unconscious mind. And the way to do that is that they will relax the patient, right, the person, and then they just start talking and they start um, asking questions and eventually they just allow the person to kind of talk with no embarrassment or judgment. And then eventually they say that if they do this, it would lead them to their unconscious mind um and then there they'll be able to retrieve it and then release it okay and a lot of these unconscious memories or thoughts come from your childhood okay so make sure you know that now there is also psychoanalysis so freud's theory of personality um the freud's theory of personality attributes thoughts and actions to our unconscious motives and conflicts Okay, um, and then this is the technique used in treating psychological disorders by seeking to expose and interpret the unconscious tension, right, to understand why those things are happening. Now, according to <clears throat> Freud, the unconscious is where there are most, the, like a reserve of the mostly unacceptable thoughts or wishes or feelings and memories are there in your unconsciousness. And since you don't want to bring them to your consciousness, they're the ones that will um, make you behave in ways that you just don't understand why, okay? And so he came up with this idea of our personality structure. And our personality is structured in two, three different ways. And it starts really with the id, the id, and it's not id, it's id. So the id basically is your unconscious um, basic need. Well, it's, it, it's basically your unconscious energy that strives for satisfying its most basic need to survive, okay? Now, I should have write that down. It operates on the pleasure principle, okay? Next little bullet under id, it also seeks immediate gratification and pleasure, and it has no contact with reality. Now, he says we're born with the id immediately. It's basically the one that is, its motive is to satisfy its basic needs, okay? Um, <clears throat> now, the ego, right, which is your conscious mind, make sure to write that down, and this one operates on the reality principle, okay? And then the ego's job is kind of, it, uh, it's for to satisfy both the id, right? It's uh, the most basic drive, right? That instinct that you want. And then it also wants to make the super ego also happy. It's trying to keep a balance between the both. And I'll talk a little bit about more what the super ego does, okay? So... The superego develops later, okay, and this is operates on morality principle. And this is your voice of moral compass. It forces the ego to consider not only real, but the ideal. Um, this one, superego strives for perfection, um, and it tends to be like judging our actions and wanting to produce more positive feelings of pride and and there's also the negative feelings of guilt okay so this one they do not consider the super ego does not consider the id like its impulses forget about that um now if you have a super strong super ego and this you need to know they tend people tend to be very guilty right they feel guilty all the time if they have a weak super ego they tend to be very self indulgent um, or less they are not as guilty right if you have high id right that you tend to be very impulsive um, if you have a low id not listening to the id you tend to then tend to go on the other side of the super ego which tends to be guilty um, feel guilty 
<clears throat> or want to be perfect all the time. So those are our three. We'll talk a little bit more in class on those, okay, and how it kind of affects that. Now, he also mentioned and created this a defense mechanisms in the ego's way of protecting. Um, it's it's the ego's way of protecting the id or the super ego. It's kind of like its way of defending itself, okay? But defense mechanism can also be a way of reducing stress. So this is linked to that stress that we talked about earlier, all right, um, from the other section. So there are different types, and they are he they're all here. Please do not write your notes like this because you will need space to be able to write them down, okay? Um, so... Defense mechanisms, what are they? Ready? So write that down as your subtopic. And it's basically your ego's protective methods of reducing anxiety by unconsciously distorting reality. So this is a way of how we distort reality to protect our um, the ego, the ego's way. Okay, so the first one is going to be repression. And repression is that it blocks impulses or memories from the consciousness, okay? Um, next little bullet is the ego pushes unacceptable impulses out of our awareness and back into the unconscious mind so that they cannot remember it. Repress, which is like it didn't exist, okay? But it is in the unconscious. If you use free association, you'll be able to get to those repressed memories. So let's say you know, really so, uh, a girl, an example would be that a young girl was sexually abused by her uncle, then as an adult, she won't be able to remember at all, okay? It's really obviously very traumatic, so they don't want to keep on reliving this memory. The next one, the next defense mechanism is going to be regression, and regression is when you revert to an earlier period of development that is less stressful okay, or less stress induced. Um, now, the next bullet, the ego seeks security in a time period, like a developmental time period that they felt safe, okay. Um, so this is usually when, let's say, for example, a little boy that he's like five years old starting kindergarten, right? And he may regress back to acting like a little baby and start sucking their thumb because of the stress. Okay, so it's typically they regress back to uh, an earlier age that they feel secure, just like if you guys um, become adults, right? You may want to go back and like stay at your parents' house or spend more time with them, right? And kind of go back into that time where you felt secure. The next one is going to be reaction formation. This is when you're switching unacceptable impulses into the complete opposite. Okay, so this is where the ego transforms an unacceptable motive into the complete opposite. So for example, if <clears throat> you're, you're really upset with someone or like angry, you don't like somebody, and then instead of being like really mean to them, you do the opposite, which would be then to be super, super friendly or, you know, completely um, <clears throat> the opposite, right? Like being overly friendly. Um, the next one is going to be projection. Projection is basically where your anxiety producing feelings are repressed and then projected onto another person or an item that is not, um, yeah, projected onto another person. Sorry. So this is where the ego attributes the personal shortcomings and problems and faults to others. So they project their own insecurities or problems onto other people. So let's say an example would be a thief would think um, everyone else is a thief, so why not, right? Or if a man um, is like a big time like flirt or cheating on uh, his wife, he may say like, oh, well, my wife is also cheating on me or something like that, okay? The next one is rationalization, and this is where you're off self-justifying explanation in place of the real more threatening 
unconscious reasons for one's actions. They want to rewind that there, okay? So this is where next bullet is that the ego replaces less acceptable motives with more acceptable ones, okay? Like you're just self, like justifying, rationalizing. So if somebody that is a, um, you know, that drinks, okay, all the time may say like oh i'm just drinking socially i'm not an alcoholic right um they're just justifying that um the next one could be displacement and displacement is when you're shifting sexual or aggressive impulses towards a more acceptable or less threatening object or person okay this is typically where you're going to displace like your anger and <laughs> agitation towards somebody or something that didn't really create those feelings. So for instance, uh, an example could be if you lose a game um, because of somebody was cheating in the game and instead of hitting that person, you know, you knock over, you hit the wall or punch the wall, that would be displacement. Um, or you start, let's say you get an argument with your parents and then you take it out on, you know, your, your friends. Okay. That would be displacement. The next one is sublimation and sublimation is basically you're transferring the transferring of unacceptable impulses into socially valued motives. So the ego replaces an unacceptable impulse with a socially acceptable one. So for example, um a person that is aggressive or that likes to dissect you know animals let's say when they're kids maybe they become a surgeon okay um that's pretty much it and then denial we'll do a lot of examples we have a i have a great worksheet for this to help you kind of practice the different uh defense mechanisms and the last one is denial, which is refusing to believe or even perceiving painful realities. And this is where the ego refuses to acknowledge anxiety. And, sorry, ego refuses to acknowledge, acknowledge anything that creates anxiety from the reality, right? So kind of they will denial is that they will deny any evidence. Let's say, for example, if somebody's cheating, their husband is cheating, or wife is cheating, they'll just basically um, deny any evidence of it, okay? So that would be denial. And that is it for this little section.